Hi guys, it's Stuart Taylor here. I used to shoot a television show called Going Nowhere Slowly, which kind of explains the headspace that a lot of artists are in. They are going nowhere very, very slowly. But a couple of them have embraced these uncertain times and they are running into the future and owning this online space. One of those people, talk about an early adopter, Skulk Besedeno, how are you, boss? How's it, bro? I mean, Liquor, man. it Listen, sounds so I'll... weird when you, hey, what? When I do Sorry, what? I'm, also, I'm also terrible on Zoom. Yes. Are we going to speak over each other on the whole thing? Is that going to be? The whole thing, the, the whole, whole thing. thing. No, I wanted I to say. That. I love that. Let's just keep, keep talking on, and we'll just completely mess with my editor. <laughs> Let him work. Let him work for a change. Um, now I wanted to say it feels so weird that you say one of the early adopters because my, my technology skills is so cocked. Like I, level five, I still had a Samsung S6, which I don't know, is like 14 Samsungs ago. Finally, I, I went and upgraded my phone. Now I have a phone that with a front camera that doesn't look like it has Vaseline smeared all over it. Nice, nice. You are looking crisp. You are looking crisp, Skulk. Uh, you're looking good. You've, uh, good. you've got, you've got your, your signature uh, feeling good, feeling positive hair. Can you, can you hoya us? There we go. Dude, people say the whole time, like, Skulk, hairdressers are open now. And I'm like, I know. I'm, this is a choice. I'm doing this. I've, I wanted to grow my hair this long. You own it. You own it, buddy. I think you are looking excellent. Listen, I want, I want to go right to the very beginning. You were one of those people who consistently put out a video going, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling positive, and you took us through every level of our lockdown. What on earth made you get up every single morning, come up with something to say, and then put it out with that level of consistency? Um... Well, the getting up part was I had a puppy that was getting me up. That was a, a must. So I had to get up at six every morning, take the puppy down to the grass to pee. And then I was awake. And then um, I said, I challenged myself and said, um, I'm going to put a video out every day. And I also like said on Instagram, I'm going to put a video out every day of lockdown. And... Um, it was like a cool challenge to set for yourself because then you just didn't have a choice. It's like when you have a show that night, it's like you have to go on stage. You better have something. But, yeah. but this, was, this was in the early days when we thought lockdown was only going to be 21 days. Here we are, a hundred and odd days later. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I was like prepared for 21 videos because I like made notes on my phone of topics to speak about. And I was like, 21 will be easy, man. I'll be easy to, it'll be easy. And then um, when it got extended to 35 days, I was like, flips them. But then after, after level five, I said, okay, I'm not going to do it every day anymore. I'm just going to do it like every once in a while, if I think of something. But I must say like every level just comes with so much content still. And every day there's so much crazy cock happening about this. And, I mean, I don't know about you, Stuart, but like I, I was feeling that, you know, people aren't going to want to hear about COVID, COVID, COVID when we go back on stage eventually. So I was like, and how long is this stuff going to be relevant? So I'm like, if I think of something funny to say, might as well put it out there as soon as possible, put it on Instagram. Because, I mean, next year, March, you're not going to be talking about, oh, remember when hairdressers were closed? during level five or whatever. Yes, yes. That's, that's an interesting take on things. So, I mean, the big, the big reason I want to sit down and have a chat with you is hopefully to pick your brain so that creatives who are watching this, if they're in a funk, they can, they can kind of go, oh, these are some pearls of wisdom from Skulk. So that's an interesting observation or just, just kind of don't wait because often as comedians, we wait, we develop a bit, we let it become good and then we put it out there. And for you, you're saying just, just put it out. Yeah, I mean, like if stuff happens in the news normally, 
we go on stage that night or that same night, like, I mean, let's take the Oscar Pistorius thing when that happened. Every comedian was going on stage as soon as we could to do material about it. When Jacob Zuma did like, we were all going on stage immediately trying to do stuff about it. So, yeah, that's what we've always done. And then you, I guess you kind of like ride the bit as long as you can until it starts becoming embarrassing that you're still talking about the subject. But, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that was for me. And also a lot of stuff that I, that I think about, um, it's like, there's like a difference. I'm sure you'll agree. There's a difference between like something that's funny on an Instagram video and stand up material. Like, some stuff I thought about that I'm like, this this will this will be quite lame on stage. Like if I tried to do this in a in a bit, it it wouldn't really work. But it's 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 perfect for just like a little Instagram video talking cock. Also, especially because my Instagram videos have have felt so like, oh, I'm just talking cock. That if something funny happens in it, it's almost like. Oh wow! Okay, like something funny happened, yeah, and that was the whole. That was the whole like point I wanted it to, how I wanted it to feel. But um, I really wanted the the Instagram videos from the start to feel like, like talking cock with your chummy or like your, your yes. the funny friend at the bry, like just like telling a funny story about oh I went for my COVID test. Like this morning I I went for a COVID test. I had to for work. Um, because I was showing some flu symptoms. And then I just put up a video like, you know, how far they put that thing up your nose and whatever. It's cock, man. So they take an earbud now. It's basically five earbuds that they've super glued against each other to make one cock long earbud. And they stick it up your nose, man. So you, you think you know where your nose ends. You think you know. You think, oh yeah, it ends here. Yeah, like okay, they stick that ear, but in it comes out your fucking poop ball. That's how long that thing is, okay? And the lack of thing about Instagram is, you know, there's no, there's no time limit. It's not like an open spot where it's like, shit, I have to have at least five yes. minutes of material to yes. It's like, if you've got two minutes of funny shit to say, say two minutes of funny shit. And if the next day you've right. got 10 minutes to say, say 10 minutes. Are you doing those as Instagram live videos or are you doing them as pre-recorded videos which you're then putting out on Instagram? No, pre pre-recorded videos that you and, and now Instagram has that function. I mean it's not like a new thing, but it's something that I only discovered in lockdown. That's an IGTV. So it's like over a minute long content, but it still lives on your timeline like a normal like a normal video. Yeah, I do it pre-recorded because Oh, sometimes I myself will speak for like 12 minutes and then I just think this is too long. And then I think, you know what, actually, if I break this thing up into three segments, I have content for three days. Then I don't have to, yeah, and I'd rather put out three, four minute videos than, I wonder if my maths are right there, yes. Three, four minute videos than one like 12 minute video. You know, because people consume uh, Instagram video, you know, while they're having coffee in the morning or, you know, they put you on in the background while they're quickly making eggs. So 10, 12 minutes is it's like too long. You know, I have done too long. The, eggs, the, egg is, the egg is so. hard, hard boiled after 12 minutes. Yeah. Whereas yeah. four minutes, it's a nice soft boiled egg. Hmm. Four minutes is perfect for like, you're waiting for the kettle to boil. Right. Watch a video, yeah. Yeah. I, I love the consistency. I mean, that is, I think, I think the one thing I will say to any of the creators who are watching this, the one thing I pick up from anyone who's seen some kind of traction, it always comes down to consistency. Not, I don't want to say not quality, but consistency trumps quality. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, like, I mean, level five, like I said, I... I challenged myself to put a video out every day. So even if it, if I felt it wasn't my funniest stuff, I, I put it out anyway. But now that I'm not doing it on a daily basis, um, you're right. You still have to be consistent. You still have to, you can't now disappear for a month 
as long as theaters and things stay closed, there's going to be a place for online performances. And I want to talk to you because I know, I, I mean, you were the person who did it first, literally. Your, yours was, the, was, was, was pioneering. You went and did, I'm, I'm going to do an online show. And we were all sitting there going, are you mad? There's no audience. There's, it, it's completely anti stuff. Talk me through, and, and I mean, we know that this uh, a lot of corporate gigs are happening right now. We, we sit in front of our cameras and we do, we do our jokes. Talk me through the, 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 the creative process of, of developing material for this new medium. I know you've, you've spoken to me about it, your, your views, but just for the purposes of this platform, what are your views on the sort of material that works best for you? The thing that made me do it is because I've just written a, a music comedy show, which is like, like Adam Sandler's special on, on um, Netflix, 100% Fresh. So I was like, songs are easier because with a song, you, you don't pause for the laughs. It's just that you sing the song. So I said, okay, I'll do that show. And in that show, it just got such a great response afterwards. And people were like, oh my word, we loved it. Please do another show. Do, and then I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do my stand up. Let's see how that works. Then I decided, and this is the conversation I had with you, decided to do my oldest material um, because it's material that I trusted and I didn't want to do something that's already nerve-wracking and also have a little voice in the back of my mind that's like, is this cock even funny? But then after doing so many of those type of shows where I was doing my existing material, I was like, you know what, now that I'm more confident in this new medium, Maybe I'll give it a bash to try and write a show just for this platform. So I, I did, then did two shows where I wrote fairy tales. I mean, I, I, I downloaded the fairy tale from the internet. And as I read it, I kind of go off on little tangents of, oh my word, you know, in my day, yet like if we went for a walk in the woods, blah, blah, blah. This is the cock that we did, blah, blah, blah. And, um, because I was like, you know what, in these Instagram videos, it's, it's, it's amazing if you like talk up for five minutes in the morning, something funny is going to come out of it. Like, even if it's just a line that you like, shit, I could expand on this and this could be like a gag one day, you know? So, yeah, because the one thing I realized that I never really thought about is that you can't reach everywhere with your live shows. There's, I mean, you as Stuart, you've got it. You've got maybe fans in London. You yes, you do go to London, but not every but year. You can't, you can't not get with the every show. That's it. Yes, exactly. You, yeah, you've got fans in Paris. Even if you only have three fans in Paris, that's still three people who want to watch you. Now, if you count exactly. all those three people, the three people who love you in Puff Adam, in Paris, in Chile. If you count all those people, all those pockets of people together that don't justify you going there with a show because you're only going to then have 20 people, 30 people, 40 people, and it's not worth the expense. If you count all those people together, that's easily now suddenly 2,000 people that want to watch you, and, but you never went to their region or their town or their whatever. Or you were there in Cape Town, whatever, but they missed your show. So I will definitely in the future, once I've toured a show and I'm ready to throw it in the dustbin, say, or ready to record it and then put it out on Showmax, say, listen, man, so this is the last one. So everyone yes. who missed it, all parts of the world, whatever, last chance to watch it, it's live, it's on your computer. And it's, it's definitely something I will still do forever. And I'm so grateful sure. in that regard for, for COVID-19, as weird as that sounds, like, you yeah. know, like for, for every negative thing that's come out of it, I think especially for performers, some positive has come out of this situation, definitely for me. Yes. So that's one of the big positives that came for me is like, wow, I discovered a whole new way of reaching people that I never would have, if I had the option of just doing a live show, I would have never even consider doing it online i just wouldn't i've heard you i've heard you speak about feelings of guilt that you are you have been very successful during a pandemic 
I mean, hands down, you really have not wasted this crisis. Besides the fact that you, you, you were able to reach a market outside of South Africa, and now that market, I think, I think certainly grew. Um, yeah. And you will get to service that market when you start traveling abroad. Uh, but talking about feelings of guilt, feelings of negativity, I noticed you once you had a very negative post that you put out, which you very quickly uh, took off. Is How important is that positive uh, kind of frame of mind during a time like this? Uh, yeah, the, um, the, the feeling of guilt was because like you, you feel bad. I've, I've now be, made the habit of putting it in my emails when um, people like, hey, what about, can, like, can you do this? Can you do this? And, I, and if I'm not available, I always say, um, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not available. I'm quite busy at the moment. And then I always say in brackets, um, believe me, I'm not complaining. Because you just feel so guilty for, for being able to like kind of, profit's not the right word. Um, just, just being able to work in a time, because not everyone has a job that they can do online. So entertainment we are lucky, singers, comedians, all entertainment, except maybe for magicians, it's quite hard online, I think. But most entertainers have been able to sort of still do online shows. And like with my online stuff, I'm very grateful but because my online, fo my following has doubled, you know, and that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for, for COVID and for the videos that I started doing and stuff. And I also wouldn't have started videos to do videos full stop if it wasn't for COVID. Hello, Mensa, Scope is side note here. Yeah? Lockdown level three, day 36. Feeling good, feeling positive. Yeah, the feeling good, feeling positive thing, I, I didn't plan. I, I, I think I, I, I said it in a video and then I said it again and then it slowly, it was like my jerseys. Like I, yes. I started collecting jerseys. It was never planned. It was never a a thing, I just liked it. And then it sort of became a thing. And then the feeling good, feeling positive became a thing. And I was like, okay, I have to say it now in every video. I mean, just me trying my absolute best to try and make people laugh. That is part of my, my way of saying, look, if you are having a cock day, here's my contribution to, to try and make it a bit less cock for you. Whether I'm successful in that or not is up for debate. But, um, yeah, that is my contribution to, you know, if you're feeling a bit down, you know, hopefully this video will, will, will cheer you up, even if it is just for five minutes. Well, you, you certainly have done that uh, for a lot of people. You have succeeded in, 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 in spreading joy during a, a crazy, crazy time over here. And then I, what, I, what I love is the fact that you didn't, you really didn't sit still. When wherever there was momentum, you were always looking for gaps, always looking for places. I don't know if it happened organically, but I mean, one of your last things is your online, your online wine sales. I mean, wine is uh, is at a premium. People don't know when we can go back into a lockdown, and wine is no longer available. And you're like, I will sell you some Skulk branded wine. Are you yeah, drinking I, your own wine, by the way? Yes, I'm drinking it right now. Um, right. No. That happened. That that happened, and, and 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 some people won't believe me, but that also happened purely by accident. Because there's this wine farm, they sent me wine in level before level five, and then that wine lockdown level five happened, and then that got get got stuck in the in the trip from Cape Town to Joburg. That got stuck on the way. Then in level four, when level four opened up, suddenly this wine came through. And I get this SMS, you've got a package at Posnet. By this stage, I'd forgotten about it. I go pick it up, it's in level four. It's still like illegal to have alcohol or to trade or whatever. Then I received this wine. I cocked myself driving back with that in my car. Because as I picked up the phone, I was like, oh, fuck, this is the wine that they sent before level five already. But then it came 
it was a blessing in disguise. It came at the right time because I was running out of wine. And I'd never heard of this wine farm before. And I loved the wine. When level three, when they announced level three, I phoned the winemaker, who I didn't know was the winemaker's wife, but I phoned whoever's number was on the thing. And I said, listen, I enjoyed your wine so much. You've got a fan for life. I love your wine. I want to order more. And I was phoning to ask if I ordered now, can it be here on level three day one? Because right. <laughs> I wanted to, to be here like on the first day that alcohol sales. But then we just started chatting. And then uh, I was asking who makes the wine. And she's like, no, it's my husband. He makes the wine, whatever. He's a winemaker. And I said, oh, you know, I've always wanted my own wine, but I just never knew how do you even approach the situation? How do you just pick up the phone and call Bayerskloof or Speer, such a big brand, and say, hey, let's collaborate. How do you even, like, do that? And she's like, we can do it for you. And I was like, oh, but, you know, and then an hour later, me and the winemaker were on the phone together, and he was like, what kind of wine do you like? So... I was actually phoning to order more wine. And then like two hours later, we were discussing my wine. Yeah, a month later, I had my own wine. But it was also purely by accident. It wasn't like, let me capitalize on the boo situation or whatever. But right, it worked right. out very well. And I've always wanted my own wine. Um, and yeah, that's also something that, like the online shows, that's something I have forever now. You know, like even yes. if we bottle yes. 500 bottles a month, you know, it's just like, it's there now. It exists. I think there's something to be said about fortune favoring the brave skulk. You've, you've, you've been tremendously brave and you've, you really have pioneered a lot of things and, and you, 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 you make us very proud when we see all you've achieved. You certainly are not going nowhere slowly. I want to say thanks. Thanks for time, man. Uh, some, some really cool pearls of wisdom. Uh, and and I, I know that people who watch this little chat are going to walk away a little bit smarter. So... I look forward to your next venture, man. <laughs> Thank you, dude. <laughs> Lekker. Thanks for joining me, bud. I'll chat to you soon. Lekker. Cheers, dude. Bye.